Rev it up and welcome to Cars Yeah, show number 1,658. This is Cars Yeah, where you'll enjoy interviews with inspiring automotive enthusiasts. Mark Green is here to provide you with a fuel injection of automotive inspiration. So get in, sit down, buckle up, and get ready for a wild ride here on Cars Yeah. Hello, inspiring automotive enthusiasts, and welcome to Cars Yeah. I'm revved up and very excited to be in Austin, Texas today with a fellow Porsche-file, a guy who loves the mark, Rob Price. Rob, welcome to Cars Yeah. Are you buckled up and ready for a fun ride? I am, Mark. Thank you. Uh, one thing that I want to ask you here, Rob, is before I do a proper introduction about what you do in your life around cars, is there one little thing you can tell me and tell our listeners that most people don't know about you? <laughs> so people at my kid's school think I'm a car dealer, which I'm not. A, a teacher recently told me I get the award for picking up kid, kids in both the biggest car and the smallest car. Ah, so. okay. Do you have a bunch of cars and that's why you're picking them up in different cars all the time? I do. We've got a car problem and it's, I share it with my <laughs> wife and, and uh, it's, you know, I'm, not, I'm no Jay Leno, but we've, uh, we've got seven cars in total and we just drive the one that, that feels right at that point. Well, that's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. Well, I'm going to give you a proper introduction and we're going to dive into your life around cars. Rob Price joined the Porsche Club of America in 2007 after purchasing his first Porsche the day the iPhone launched. Oh, you're the one responsible for all my spending. Thank you very much. I bought every <laughs> iPhone they've had. Looking at the uh, newest one in front of me right here. Love the iPhone. He was working on Apple's original iPhone product team. Very cool. And so his love affair for the mark began. He has since been the Hill Country Region's president and currently leads the PCA's National Tire Rack Street Survival Teen Driving Program. That's very cool. He is a well-known car addict, as he mentioned, owning seven currently, and a challenge most cars, yeah, listeners will be very sympathetic towards. He lives in Austin, Texas with his wife. He has five children, holy cow, two dogs, three cats, and approximately... He may have counted them all, 20,000 bees. Very cool. We'll be back in a minute to talk with Rob about his car addiction problems and how he's helping teens be safer on the road. But first, a word from our valued sponsors. They make the show possible, so sit tight, keep the seatbelt on. We're going to have some fun today with the Porsche. Mark, be right back. Did you know Covercraft offers you much, much more than car covers, floor mats, seat covers, and trunk liners? When you visit Covercraft.com, you'll find Cologne Custom Bras, Labra Front End Covers, and Hood Protectors that protect your vehicle's front end while on a road trip. No more rock chips or hours removing nasty bug jerky from your grill and your paint. You'll find vehicle seatback organizers that keep everything in check, perfect for those kids in the back seat. Spidey gear webs that keeps cargo that's in your truck bed safely in place. Seat heaters, cargo bars, pro nets, rooftop carriers, bumper frames, bump steps, pet ramps, pet travel barriers to keep Fido in the back seat, tire covers, Carhartt backpacks, cooler bags, tote bags, tool bags, and zipper tote bags to keep everything secure. And don't forget their dash mat dashboard covers that shield the sun's damaging UV rays. Covercraft offers you an incredible list of solutions for your favorite rides. They're easy to install, easy to remove pet protection pads, are easy to wash too, and protect your floors and seats from Fido's damaging claws and messy fur and air. And here's something special from me here at Cars Yeah. If you use the code YAH120 at checkout at Covercraft.com, they'll give you 10% off on me. Covercraft.com. Go there and use the code YEAH120 at checkout for that 10% discount. Covercraft, they've got you covered. When it was time to renew my last policy for my collector car, my carrier's rates went up. They went way up. But my usage was the same, and I never had made a claim. No tickets, nothing. What's with that? American Collectors Insurance, that's who now protects my Porsche Turbo. The one I call my orange crush. Has your collector car insurance recently raised your rates for no good reason? Tired of paying an annual membership fee? I was too. 
So I shopped around, I asked friends for recommendations, and found a winner that I can trust. And boy, am I glad I did. I'm saving hundreds of dollars. I can sleep at night knowing my baby is properly insured. American Collectors Insurance have been protecting vehicles since 1976. They provide me with an agreed value insurance policy backed by a history of taking care of their clients. What could be better than that? Give them a call for a quote today at 866-ACI-YEAH. That's 866-224-9324. And protect the ones you love like I did. American Collectors Insurance. Classic car insurance designed by collectors for collectors. All right, Rob, we're back. And uh, I'm dodging all the bees here that are flying around my head. Um, <laughs> waiting for uh, the honey harvest to come. I want you to share with me a uh, success quote or maybe a mantra, some kind of saying that has some meaning for you in your life. It's a great way to get the inspirational tires turning here on Cars, yeah? So, Rob, grab one of the wheels. Sure. So it's actually a Tina Fey quote and uh, she in her book, Bossy Pants. And, it, and <laughs> the quote is, say yes. Okay. And then there's there's a there's a second version of it, which is say yes and. And for me, so for her, it was it's instructive about stand up comedy and and how, you know, one comedian throws something out and the next comedian is expected to grab it and build on it. Right. For me, say yes has meant when you're in a situation Instead of trying to drive through it in the way that maybe your history tells you to interpret it, think about it as something to grab onto and take it for what it is and move it forward. And that can be an opportunity. It can be, you know, the car that you walk out to and it's like, oh, I got the wrong keys in my hand. Ah, I'm going to take this one. And so it's just kind of embracing life as it as it comes to you and moving forward with how it comes rather than trying to swim upstream or bucket. You know, this is very... Very poignant today because I go for a walk every day with my neighbor's dog, Warden. I did that today. And the podcast I listened to was, I believe it's called The Happiness Lab. And they were talking about stoicism and thinking about how these uh, I, these things come into our life and you can accept them as negative or you can accept them as positive. Instead of being a victim, you can be a target. And I loved hmm. the whole concept. In fact, I'm going to write, do my blog next week about this. But I love that idea. And that's just taking things as they come and not not looking at them as negative things because every day something crazy happens to us that sometimes yeah. it's bad and it's all how you frame it right right exactly yeah that's great i love it very very cool well let's talk about one of the really important things that you do with the Porsche club of america and that's the national tire rack street survival teen program driving program i mean nothing could be more important than putting our young people behind the wheels of vehicles and helping them understand how to survive streets. Uh, boy, these days and age, it's getting crazier and crazier. So I know you're a Porsche fan, so maybe you can touch on that a little bit too. But let's talk about this program that you're heading up because it's so important. Yeah, sure. And so the program was actually started by the BMW Car Club of America. They have an education foundation that developed the curriculum. And they decided some years ago to make that curriculum available to other car clubs. And so they reached out to Corvette and they reached out to SCCA and to PCA. And I remember it was one of those things for me where I remember the moment I got the email from PCA saying, hey, we're supporting this program. If your region is interested, jump in. And at that time, I was the president of our region here in Austin, the Hill Country region. And at that moment, I knew I did not want to run for president again of that region. <laughs> I wanted to I wanted to start that program in our region and run it. And uh, it was kind of a defining moment for me because, you know, I, d I do have five kids. And so at that time, I was two years away from inflicting my next child on the roads. And so <laughs> I knew that I had to do something about it. And uh, and that was the program. So it is uh, last year in uh, that would have been 2019 at this point. The program nationally had run over uh, 100 classes, and that was by BMW, SCCA and us. And PCA had never been the lion's share of that number, and they decided that they really wanted to, to up our game at a national level. And so a friend of mine here in Austin um, was our outgoing president of the national org, and she called me up and said, hey, we, we want to do this better, and uh, would you consider running the program for us club-wide? 
And I didn't even have to think about it. It was yes. And yes, I will do it. <laughs> yes. And, <laughs> and I'm, and I'm in. And then we had a great year planned for 2020 and then 2020 happened, yeah, you know? Yeah. So, but yeah, it's been, it's a, it's a fantastic program aimed at kids 16 to 21. And so you just, you have to have a driver's license mm-hmm. and you have to be able to, to drive a car by yourself. And it's a one day. And I, I like to describe it to people as in, in one of two ways. It is driver's ed graduate level or the things that'll get you kicked out of driver's ed. <laughs> yeah. And so it's half in car, half in classroom. And on the in car side, there are four core elements we run you through. You're doing ABS braking. You're doing a slalom course. Then there is a high-speed lane change, which you can also tell them to to visualize it as obstacle avoidance at a higher speed, Mm -hmm. right? That's why you would do a lane change like that. And then the final thing, which is always the most popular, is the skid pad, where we wet the surface and then they do donuts and try and keep control of the car. And uh, it's just the kids love it, right? Yeah. They, they arrive in the morning. They've all been brought by their parents, you know, and if it's a Saturday morning, there's not a single teenager in the room that actually wanted to be there because that's their sleep in day. Right. right? Yeah, <laughs> exactly. But by lunchtime, they've had such a great time that either, and, and we throw it out at lunch. We say, if you haven't had a great time, if you're not enjoying this, we will give you a full refund. You can leave right now. No questions asked. And nobody's ever taken us up on it. And uh, the kid, the kids just love it. Yeah, it's an incredible program. Back when my kids were just turning 15 and 16, both of them, I put them through the BMW program back then. Now, my kids are 26 and 31 now. So uh, I thought it was really important. And that was the time when I was, I had just gotten into racing vintage cars and I started my track time in a BMW M3, 36 M3, and then graduated to an E46 M3. But I always had Porsches and I thought, okay, if I'm going to have kids in my family, I want them to be able to drive. Both my kids learned how to drive stick shift on my 72 911 S. I always thought, Uh you know, and I remember my daughter going, dad, I don't want to learn how to drive on that car. It's too special to you. And I said, look, I want you to always be able to say that I learned to drive stick shift in this car just Uh just because it sounds cool. Now, she's never been a car person, but I thought it sounded cool. And I here I am sharing the story again. I still think it's cool. But the program was so important. And both my kids came back. My daughter especially wasn't that keen on it. My son, of course, wanted to do it. But I think he thought it was going to be more like a racing school because it took place out at Performance Racing School with Don Kitch. Uh, the Pacific Raceway that we have here. But they both came back really happy. Uh, One of the things they did in that school back then was drop a tire off the pavement and see what happens when you try to bring it back on the right way or the wrong way or to get the Mm -hmm. car under control uh, because we see so many of that. They jerk the wheel, they come right back across traffic and you have a head-on collision on your hands and and people die. So it's a wonderful thing to do. I'd encourage everybody... Now, you don't have to take your fancy car. In fact, they they preferred that you not bring your kids in a sports car. Uh, they, right. They said, you know, we want slower cars. So in my case, the cars that we got for our kids, my daughter, a Mini Cooper, and my son, a, a 328CI BMW, instead of my M3 or my Porsches. Sure. They had a great time. It's just so, so important. Now, I have to ask you this being a, you know, I drank the apple juice a long time ago when <laughs> the old days of... The Apple SE, that was my first experience with uh, okay. Apple computers. But the iPhone, when you, you know, every time I tell people, look, this thing's only been around, what, 11, 12 years? And yeah. they go, no, that can't be. It's, it's been around my whole life. Uh, what was that like working on that first team? Um, it, it was an incredible experience. I've, I've been with Apple since 93. You know, I'd been at Apple for, for a while at that point. But it was, it, we pulled, every group within Apple pulled their best people together to make that happen and to launch that. And it wasn't, it wasn't just another device. I mean, we fundamentally changed the cell phone world. Um, we changed, you know, what people expected of a, of a cell phone. It created a whole new category. And so if you think about it, pre iPhone, it was, everything was what was called a feature phone. And it was just, uh, with the exception of something like the Motorola Razor, which was a flip phone and, you know, but they all basically were the same. It was like a small screen and a, and a keypad, and you were limited to what you could display in that small screen and what you could enter with the keypad. And BlackBerry, you know, brought a full a full keyboard, and you know that changed some things. But you still had that small screen, and so it changed a lot about how people 
what they think they could do with their cell phones. It changed the, the carriers in terms of thinking what's the nature of the relationship between them and, and the cell phone suppliers. I mean, it, it was it was uh, pretty transformative in a lot of ways. Well, it's absolutely incredible to me. They just did an upgrade to the to uh, software to the 14.0, which I think is pretty cool. They did some neat things. I've got the uh, 11 Pro Max and I use my phone for everything. In fact, I'll tell you something. I did a lot of photography uh, for over the years. I have over 110,000 images in my library of cars and events mm-hmm. I've been to. And this yeah. year, my Nikon, well, this year is not really a, a fair trade, but even last year, later last year, I stopped carrying my heavy Nikon and I just carry my yeah. iPhone. Now, I know there's diehards out there and I'm one of them. I, I mean, I'm, I've am i got all the lenses, all the stuff, but I've been hard pressed to go out and buy the new mirrorless I want to buy, which is that Sony uh, mirrorless, you know, the wonderful camera they've got, you know, I've got friends keep saying, why aren't you going to buy that? But I tell you, and the videos, I shoot videos yeah. for Covercraft for Car Care Tips by Mark Green for Covercraft, and they're just insane. I mean, it's, yeah. I'm I'm figuring you guys have put what maybe a uh, hundred different devices out of business because when you think about it, all the things this thing can do, right? It just, I it just, it's so fun. I mean, it's just, it's revolutionized the world. So kudos, kudos to you and your team. I know there's people out there that oh, I like my droid or whatever it is they have but I, sure I, i'm sure. a i'm an apple guy I, I probably at least paid for a couple of your tires on your car because we've got <laughs> we've got two imax in the house two laptops two ipads two iphones my kids work on them uh yeah, yeah. they're just wonderful very cool one of the things i thank like you. that you're welcome and thank you for uh making life so much more fun there's just so many cool things we can do nowadays one of the things I like to ask my guests here, Rob, is to share a big challenge or even a big failure in life. Uh, boy, uh, developing and launching the iPhone, that had to have been a huge challenge. But the more important part of this lesson is what did it teach you in a positive yeah. way? So take us on a little trip, would you? Yeah. So for something like that, it, it it's something I've used in business as well as certainly in the car space. And anybody who's a racer, uh, this will resonate with them too. And it's it's this idea of if somebody tells you that you can't do something, one of my favorite questions, follow-up questions is, show me where it says that so I can <laughs> make sure to full, fully comply with what I can't do. If you've got a situation where someone says, oh, it's a regulatory thing, it's a legal thing. I bought one of my seven cars as a fire truck. You have a fire truck? I own a 1990 Sutphin Deluge Pumper, and we use it <laughs> okay. for, for the street survival course to, oh, to yeah, wet the yeah, yeah. skid pad. And it's also great marketing because it's got you know the website plastered on the side of it, and yeah. it's uh, got Porsche Club crests on the front, and, and it's just – it's awesome. But when I registered that car, every like every step of trying to get myself in that – fire truck legal in the state of Texas was met with the question, what fire department are you with? And I wasn't. I, it's a privately owned fire truck. And I have a cousin who collects military vehicles and he and he prepared me for this and said, no, look, you've got to go into yeah. the transportation code. You got to learn the law because the people who do the registration and licensing aren't going to know it. And long story short, I had to go all the way to the state level legal department of our department of transportation because every other level between me and the county had said no. Mm. But it went all the way to the, to the state, and I explained to the lawyers at the state where in the transportation code it said that this is not only perfectly legal, but that I also qualified for exempt plates, mm. which would save me hundred, hundreds a year yeah. in registration fees. And they looked at it and said, no, you're absolutely right. And they communicated it back all the way down to the county that, no, this is totally fine. You can issue the plates. Nice. So, but that only happened because I, I I knew what the specific law was, and just don't assume that people know what the legislation is that they think prevents them or or right. compels them to do something. Just always dig into the details, and racers know this better than anybody else. <laughs> <laughs> yes, the details. Well, you know, this is interesting because what comes to mind in the state where I am, if you have a car that's over thirty years old you can get collector plates. And a lot of states do this. And that exempts you from having it re-registered every year. In a case of this state, and they just stopped doing it. You used to have to take your cars in to get them smog certified. They just stopped doing that in this state. But I remember I was coming back from Canada in my 911S. And you go through inspection there at the border crossing. And the guy pulls me over and he goes, we have a problem. And I go, what's that? And he goes, well, first of all, you don't have a front plate. 
And I said, well, I don't have to have one. He goes, yes, you do in the state of Washington. I said, not if it's a collector plate. He said, a what? I said, a collector right. plate. And then he goes around, he goes, oh, you don't have a current tab. And I said, again, it's a collector plate. Well, things got crazier from there because he had no idea. Yeah. I thought he would. But the thing I had done is in this state, you can also take your collector plate off. And if you can find an authentic vintage plate, it can't be a reproduction. Right. You can put that on, which I had, 1972. Yeah. That made it worse. Well, we were there for an hour. And, <laughs> and I finally, my, my son was with me. And of course, he's more tech savvy, always has been. And while I'm sitting there, you know, you don't want to piss these guys off because they can make your no. day really bad. And right. so finally, my son said, Dad, I, I want to, and I said, don't, you know, sit tight, bud. I'm dealing with this. He goes, no, Dad. I, <laughs> he goes, Dad. I go, what? He goes, can I show the officer this Washington state website where it cites the law. You know, he was pulling it up on his Apple phone. And I right. said, that would be a splendid idea, son. And so so the officer looks at it. He reads it. He goes back in his little thing and he comes out and he goes, okay, fine. He still wasn't right. very happy because probably we had shown him up. But yeah, have your facts. So what I did, and to this day, I do it with all my collector cars, is I print that page out with a reference to that. And I, once in a while, I've been pulled over. How come you don't have current tabs? Here, take a look at this. That's, oh, okay, I wasn't aware. Yeah, yeah, so. <laughs> well, that's the beauty of the fire truck is you never get pulled over. No, and, probably not. Not, tell, not much speeding in a fire truck. <laughs> well, it's not even that. You know, when I bought it, I bought it. You know, I live in Austin, Texas, and I bought it from uh, a private owner, actually a family member of one of the, of the family that built the fire truck, one of the Sutphin family members. Wow. And they, um, they didn't have, because they weren't, the, the guy uh, wasn't a car dealer. It didn't, it wasn't registered. And I hadn't made arrangements to have um, uh, temporary tags to drive it back legally from Ohio back to Austin. And mm -hmm. so because it's over 10,000 pounds, I have to have a class B license. And my cousin did. And he, and luckily he's also an ex cop. So he rode back with me and we drove that truck from Ohio back without, without license plates. Wow. <laughs> and and I was kind of nervous. And I said to my cousin, I was, look, we're going to do this without plates. He's like, you're a fire truck. No one is going to pull you. Yeah, over. no one cares. <laughs> and every single cop we passed just waved at us. That's nice. Well, what what a cool thing to have. That's very sweet. Well, we yep. come back from a little break here with our sponsors. I want to dive into this passion you have for cars. Obviously, you love cars. You've got a very interesting collection with the fire truck and Porsches. So sit tight. Keep your seatbelt on. Uh, we're on the skid pad here, having some fun, learning how to handle cars a little better. We'll be right back. Let's step away from the conversation to talk about our charity of choice here at Cars Yeah, America's Automotive Trust. America's Automotive Trust is a group of like-minded nonprofits that are working together to preserve and promote car culture across the country. Together, they provide scholarships and grants to aspiring technicians and restoration artists. They provide youth education programs and bring communities together through automotive-related events, car shows, and drives. Among those nonprofits is RPM Foundation, a terrific organization working to keep our favorite collector cars on the road. RPM was created to ensure that the specialized skills needed to care for classic automobiles, boats, and motorcycles continue to be passed down from generation to generation. They do this by supporting training for young people with a passion for restoration and setting them up with mentors who can share their valuable knowledge. So far, they've awarded more than $3.5 million to restoration education projects across 35 states. Incredible. To learn more about RPM or to donate to their mission, visit www.rpm.foundation. You'll be glad you did. My favorite collector car magazine is Keith Martin's Sports Car Market. I've been a subscriber for decades. Sports Car Market is the Wall Street Journal for enthusiasts and collectors. It's your monthly must-read. Whether you dream of owning a collector car, maybe you have two, or maybe you've got 200. Sports Car Market has been around for 31 years, and it's filled with valuable articles, intelligent write-ups, and the latest auction sales. Go to sportscarmarket.com and subscribe today. And here's a couple of deals I have for you just for listening here on Cars Yeah. If you use the checkout code Cars Yeah, you'll receive a 50% discount on your digital subscription at Sports Car Market. That's an exclusive offer from Cars Yeah. And guess what? Here's another deal. If you'd like to get the actual magazine, use the code BSH 
for buy, sell, hold. That's code BSH. And you'll get $10 off your annual print subscription. That's right. $10 off. Both of these are exclusive offers here at Cars Yow for Sports Car Market Magazine. Just go to sportscarmarket.com and get your deals today. All right, we are back, Rob. I'd love for you to share a story that instigated your personal passion for cars, that moment in your life when you knew, uh-oh, I'm a car guy. Yeah, so when I was young, my dad had a Bentley, and it was a free Bentley. He got it for free. So the Bentley was a cool car. Yeah. And it was our it was our ice cream car. My dad is is a retired Episcopal priest and and uh, with a with a wicked sense of humor. And and <laughs> whenever a couple came in to 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 be married, he would always ask him, "Do you have a plan to get from the church to the wedding reception?" And if they didn't, he would offer to dress as a chauffeur and drive them in his oh, Bentley. Oh, how cool is that? What a it nice guy! Awesome. Yeah, it was awesome. And so you know, as a family, it, it was our ice cream car. We'd we'd pile in the car and go get ice cream in it. And so. Every car, I think, should have a great story. Yeah. And for me personally, cars represented freedom and connection with my friends, the ability to move around. And I think for kids today, that's their cell phones. And, yeah. and that's why you see the, the, you know, the trend of them not getting their driver's licenses the instant they turn 16, like you and I did. I right? know. I was, I was in line at 7 a.m. My mom going, why do we get here an hour early? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, one hundred percent. And so I, I think you know, that that Bentley was was when I knew that I, I loved this thing was out there was fascinating to me. And and I always when I when I look for a car, I look for one that I have an emotional connection to. And I'm excited about. And luckily, they they generally come with a good story too. So yeah, that's a nice thing your dad did. We were married. A friend of mine from college, dad was Episcopal preacher, and we drove from the wedding to our reception in a '61 Rolls Royce Phantom. <laughs> uh, which was uh, was pretty fun. All white. Yeah, it was a guy yeah. that, that uh, he rented his car out and he would dress up like a chauffeur and uh, he had champagne in the back for us and everybody waved at us and had the just married sign. But it was a very proper awesome. sign in the back. It was it was pretty cool. Of well, course. let's talk about your first car because you've got a lot of cars. You've probably had a lot of cars, but I want to talk about the first one that you finally acquired that had great meaning for you and maybe share a memory about that vehicle. So my dad, when I was, uh, I was back from college and, and I was, I was not a, uh, a very focused student and, and somehow he still managed to supply me with a car. And it was, uh, it was an old Subaru GL little two door. And for some reason, and I reflect back on it and I'm, I'm a little embarrassed, but I, I wasn't that excited about it when he first got it. And I think it was a little disappointing to him, but it but ended up falling in love with it. This thing was quirky that the spare tire People that had old Subarus will remember this. Do you remember where the spare was? On a, Mark? Su a Subaru GL. I'm, okay, it's got to be somewhere interesting, right? I mean, sticking out. Yeah, it was on top of the motor. Oh, like it was under the hood. Yeah, on top of the motor. You're, uh, that's right. Yeah. You, in fact, you bring that back because I was detailing cars back in the day, and I remember the gentleman wanted me to clean his engine bay. So I opened it up and I went, "What the heck is the tire doing in here?" Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So it was that car and that, and that car was super fun. And I, I absolutely drove it into the ground. So by the time I traded it in on, on my first German car, which is a, a Volkswagen Jetta that I absolutely loved. Um, by the time I traded it in, the whole exhaust system was held in with hay baling wire <laughs> that I got from a friend when I visited him at Texas A&M. And, yeah. and there was there was JB Weld in the radiator. I mean, it was song and a prayer together. holding that thing. Together. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Very yeah. cool. You mentioned a Jetta. My wife and I, our first car was a Jetta GLI. Remember those? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I do. 84, I think that car was. We got mm. it the first year we were married. It was the first new car we bought together. So that was a great car. We drove that car yeah. 100,000 plus miles. It was awesome. And uh, actually yeah. sold it to a mechanic when we bought my wife a uh, Acura Legend. Remember those uh, from the, the nine, uh, early 90s, 89, 90, 91, I think, something like that. But uh, yeah. the, they inspect, we were going to trade the car in because I figured it wasn't worth much. And the salesman came out and, and he said, one of my mechanics wants to buy your car. <laughs> he goes, yeah. this thing is incredible. He said, when did you have it repainted? And I said, that's all original. It's never been repainted. <laughs> he goes, he's awesome. never seen a car that's been taken care of like this. So he ended up buying from us. So uh, yeah, went to a nice home. Well, here's a bit of a, a mind bend for you, Rob. I'll bet no one's ever asked you this. If you woke up tomorrow and you were a vehicle, now this isn't what you want to be. This is how you perceive your personality as a vehicle. 
What would Rob Price be? <laughs> well, I wish I were my 944 Turbo. Oh, yeah. Uh, those but, are cool. <laughs> <laughs> but in the area in the era of COVID, I'm feeling more like my fire truck. You know, I'm, I'm a little <laughs> I'm a little fluffier and a little more uh, kind of practical and a little less speedy and nimble. But yeah, uh, yeah. You know, it'd be somewhere between one of those two. Okay. Well, that's that's quite a, a juxtaposition between those two. I have a friend that last year bought a really nice, very low mileage 944, a beautiful mm-hmm. car. It was a special edition model, and I can't remember what he told me it was, but it had really cool seat pattern fabric, kind of a yeah. crazy pattern in it, and it's kind of a bronzy gold color a little bit. Mm-hmm. He always has a uh, Bill, Bill, if you're listening, hello. Uh, he always has a trick for uh, finding really cool stuff, and he's got a lot of nice old Porsches. So there you go. All right, Rob, we're entering the last lap. We're going to take that fire truck out for one last spray down to make sure everybody slides real nice through the corners, hits those apexes just right. I'm going to ask you some questions, get some quick blips of that fire truck throttle. Better yet, maybe let's make it the 944 throttle. That sounds a little right. more cool. Would you share one of your personal habits you believe has contributed to your successes in life? Sure. If you're going to do something, do it well. Well, yeah. And you guys did. The Apple iPhone. Thank you very much. Absolutely. I'm going to keep praising you for that just because I'm so addicted to these things. If I could arrange for you to sit down and have a drink or a meal with anyone in the automotive industry, living or deceased, who would it be? It would be whoever designed the late 80s model Volvo 740 Turbo Wagon. Okay. Now, why (laughs) the, the late 80s Volvo Turbo Wagon? Hmm. Yeah. Okay. I loved it because it was it's a total sleeper car, right? And if you remember, they they marketed it as until Ferrari makes a station wagon, this is your seven seater Ferrari. Okay, yeah, yeah, okay. Now what yeah, 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 yeah. A uh, bit of yeah, sleeper for sure. Well, that's pretty cool. Have you driven one? Have you owned one? You know, I've never owned one, but we, uh, of our seven cars, three of them are wagons. And so we really are just kind of, just something about the wagon I've always loved. I've never been an SUV person, but but a wagon person, and, and I share this with my wife. I mean, she has a Subaru Outback. We've also got a 72 Chevelle wagon, which is super fun. And then my car, my daily is a is a Mercedes E400 wagon, which is one of my favorite all-time cars, the, the, the E-Series wagon. Now, when it comes to automotive advice that someone else has ever given to you that you found really valuable, what would that be? So it would be that your car is more capable than you are as a driver. I was told that in the context of a high-speed driver education class that PCA does. And it is it is so true, especially for people who are ready to jump off and go make all these modifications, especially performance modifications to their car. And it's like, hang on, that thing is already better than you are as a driver. So focus on the thing behind the wheel rather than what's surrounding you. Yeah, no, that's great. I love it. Yeah, very important. Now, when it comes to resources, is there one in particular that you'd like to share you found really valuable? So can I give you two? Of course. (laughs) So the first one would be, and I got to plug this because it's the street survival class. Anybody who's interested in it for their their kids or the neighbors or anybody who's 16 to 21, streetsurvival.org is the website. And that's how you go sign up for the class. And it's nationwide. And um, so just look for it. If there's not one in your area, it'll notify you when one does come up in your area. Mm -hmm. But that's the website you sign up. The other one is uh, if your listeners or if, Mark, if you aren't aware of it or if your listeners aren't aware of it, there's an organization called World Chef's Kitchen, WCK.org. And it's um, the brainchild of of a chef named Jose Andreas. And he has done amazing things with with food through COVID, and even uh, he has a plan uh, during the upcoming election to serve to to serve mobilize chefs to serve people food while they're late, waiting in line to vote. Oh, and, I love uh, it! Really cool ideas. Yep. Yeah, I've never heard of that. So wck.org. That's correct. Okay. Um, uh, well, very cool. I'll put a link to that. Now, when it comes to books, is there a great book that you'd like to recommend? Yeah, so I'm going to disappoint more people than 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 I'm going to make happy. So oh, we have okay. several friends that are that are authors, but right. my dad wrote a book on near death experiences, oh, really? and um, 
it's really amazing book. So for anybody who's who's lost a family member or you know is facing that, it's it's an amazing book that Dad wrote based on uh, interviewing uh, several hundred people who had gone through this experience of dying and being resuscitated. Oh, wow. uh, and and so it's the story of the commonalities. But it's called Revealing Heaven, and his name is John Price, and it's it's up on Amazon and every other place you can buy books. Ah, oh, fantastic! Oh, I think my mom would probably love to read that book. I'll have to uh, get a copy of that for her. That's really fascinating. Very, very cool. I love it. That's great. I'll make sure I put a link to that book on Rob Price's show notes page on the Cars yeah website. Just go there and type in Rob Price. Easy to find. And that book, along with, gosh, I think there's over 1,700 now on my guest recommended books page on the resources tab. You can fill the whole library with the great books my inspiring automotive enthusiasts have offered here. Pretty cool that that's your dad's book as well. All right, Rob, we are up to the checkered flag, and this last question could be a bit of a doozy. Now, if you've listened to Cars Yeah before, you'll know there's, of course, some rules to this game, but I'm going to buy you a cool car today, something fun, not a daily driver. I want it to be something special, but you can't sell it to buy another seven cars with. you got to keep it. I want you to drive it. But here's the hard part. This means you can only have one collector car in your garage. You can't have a bunch of cars in your garage. So it's got to tick all the boxes so that when you walk out you put a big puts a big smile on your face and you say thanks mark this is what i'm going to drive today so what's it going to be so i love a good sleeper wagon and so for me that car would be the mercedes amg wagon the 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 e-class amg yeah oh my gosh yeah you know wagons are so cool and it's kind of sad because there aren't too many left to buy in this country anymore no uh, no, they've really all aren't. gone away. Now, I know Audi's coming out with a pretty cool one mm-hmm. that's new, but I tell you, I have a friend that was going to buy one of those, and I met him down at the Mercedes dealership, and he drove it home, and oh my gosh. One of the things that was cool was when he went around a corner, the bolsters would puff up to kind of yep. hold you in place. I'm like, I said, are you doing that? And he goes, no, I'm not touching. That's no. just part of the deal. Yeah. So tell me, what? why do you love wagons so much? And of course- the Mercedes AMG. That's pretty sweet. <laughs> well, so my current car is is an is an E four hundred wagon, which is a twin turbo V six, and and it's, it's basically I'm too cheap to buy the E sixty three. Well, it's they're a lot very more expensive. expensive. Yeah, they are. They are, and you know, this is coming from a Porsche guy, right? And so, <laughs> yeah. But I love it because, you know, I've got kids and I've, we've got dogs and we're always yeah. going things and doing things with people. And the wagon allows us to to do that, you know, with some panache, right? Yeah. And so it fits us well lifestyle-wise. You know, I always love it when people answer the question that way where they can put their family all in the vehicle and go out and enjoy it. But still have some fun. And I've always thought over the years, I've wanted to get a wagon for my wife, but I always want some kind of cool deal. And you look at some of them like this one or the the Porsche uh, Panamera wagon version of that car or the Audi version or all of these. Even when you think back to the old, remember the old uh, Avant? I think it was the six, the wagons that they came out with. It was like, you couldn't even get them here. Those blue ones. Um, yeah, then yeah. my wife had one. Very nice cars. <laughs> All right. Now, what color would you like yours to be? Just so I get the right one for you. Oh, white. What? Oh, you're into white cars. Okay. Very cool. Absolutely. Yeah. Classic, yep. classic, clean color. Nice. All right. Okay. I'll get to work there. Rob, you've taken me on a fun ride today. We've had some fun out on the skid pad, learning how to be better drivers today. I want to thank you for sharing your journey. Before I let you go, though, is there one little parting piece of wisdom or guidance that you would offer before you pile the, f- the family, five kids, into that wagon and head to the ice cream store? Sure. Now, it's something one of my first bosses told me, which was nobody ever died thinking that they wished they'd spent more time in the office. <laughs> and, uh, you know, we, we tend to be workaholics, and yeah. it's just a good way to remember that the, the real fun is outside. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And I encourage all our listeners, you know, get involved with car clubs. Uh, Even if you're not a diehard person, you'll meet some really cool people. You'll do some fun things. And most car clubs, including the Porsche Club, which I'm a member of, there's all sorts of different events at different levels. Don't be intimidated. And I love the fact, too, that they're doing a lot more women's events where women Mm -hmm. can be around other women. They don't feel intimidated by men. And I love the fact that the PCA, I'm seeing a nice shift in the PCA. The most recent Panorama magazine talked about young people. Love what Rob Sass is doing there, getting them into the hobby 
It's so yeah. important. We got to do that because otherwise all the old guys are going to fade away and there will be no clubs. <laughs> yeah, it's it's a hard push for both kids and women. And sim racing is another thing that's gotten yeah. oh, really yeah. big. Yeah, that's in the most recent Panamera. Uh, our exactly. Panamera. That's the car. Yep. <laughs> Panorama, yeah, right. the yeah. magazine. Exactly. Yes, yeah, I've One got, has no seats. Uh, yeah, no seats. I've got cars in my head. What's the best way for listeners to follow along or uh, with you or should it be PCA.org? So either PCA.org or the website for the for the school is streetsurvival.org. Um, we'll tell you where all the classes are. But, I, you know, it's funny. If, for people that are in the military, I think one of the one of the best benefits of being in the military is is USAA. Yes. And just like one of the best benefits of, of owning a Porsche is PCA. Yeah. Um, there's so much incredible value that comes in PCA. And it really is. It's not just greasy haired old men. It's it's women. <laughs> it's kids. It's it's everybody. You can my family. I've always taken my family on. on uh, and they've been just as involved as me. Yeah. So, yeah, it is a family of fair and you get involved with the Porsche parades all over the country and mm-hmm. you get involved with even your local Porsche club. And if you like to get out and drive, they have tours. They also have track events, uh, driving events. Um, you know, you can go at your own pace. You don't feel like you're, you know, not racing with anybody. You're having fun. So check it out. And I like that you mentioned USAA too. They're a great organization. We've insured our home with them both ever since we got married yeah. 36 years ago. Also, I want to shout out to my good friend, Cindy Sisson. She introduced <laughs> me to Rob. She's great. I call her the super connector. She and Teresa Gilpatrick, who were just recently guests on my show, just launched their business, GS Events. You got to check it out. They're doing a lot of incredible things with women, women in the automotive sector. And we're working on a little secret uh, project together that I'm hoping we can announce later this year or early next year. So pay attention to that. Rob, thanks for being so generous today with your time, your expertise, and your fun, and everything you're sharing with us. You're one of the few guys who've been on the show that owns a fire truck. That's pretty cool. (laughs) Until you and I talk again, my friend, I'll see you down the road. My pleasure. Thank you. So what do you do after running a race team for 27 years with over 100 podiums, multiple Daytona wins, and a win at Le Mans? Racer and the Racers Group team owner, Kevin Buckler, founded Adobe Road Winery. Located in Petaluma, California, he and his team have created a winning combination with the Racing Series. These are four ultra-premium red wine blends that are in a class of their own. Like racing, these wines comprise of art, precision, engineering, science, wrapped in a whole lot of fun. You can choose from four blends, titled Redline, Apex, Shift, and the 24. Today I'm going to tell you about Apex. It's a rich and complex blend of Cabernet Sauvignon, Syrah, and Cabernet Franc. This blend is a showcase of perfection and hits the apex with its full-bodied smooth finish. An added very cool option is the label. It's a multi-dimensional rumble strip apex reminiscent of turn four at Laguna Seca. The racing series is a spectacular gift for the automotive enthusiast in your life and I've got a deal for you. If you use the code CARS, yeah, all one word in all caps, at checkout, you get $10 off any purchase of the wines from the racing series. Your wine ships promptly and arrives quickly. Use the code CARS, yeah, at checkout for $10 off your purchase today. There's always a seat at the table for excellence with the racing series. Go to adoberoadwines.com today and use the code CARS, yeah. <coughs> Cheers! If you're listening to Cars Yeah, you've probably spent some time working on your favorite ride. But how confident are you working on your finances? You may be able to rebuild a fuel injection system, but can you decipher the details of a mutual fund? If you're like me, investments, insurance, annuities, budgeting, and other financial concepts may seem a bit daunting. But what if I told you there's a book that describes these subjects and more in an easy-to-read and a very humorous way? My friend Chris Kimball, CFP, a longtime sponsor and past guest here on Cars yeah, has written that book, and it's titled The Saga of Ike and Penny, a couple's humorous journey through the confusing world of finance. It's a fun look at things you need to know, everything from investing to effective ways to get rid of credit card debt, and it's probably the only book on finance with a VMAX on the front cover and a classic Mini Cooper on the back. The book's available at Amazon for just $10, and this book will dramatically improve the direction of your financial future. I gave copies to each of my children. All securities are through Money Concepts Capital Corp. Christopher Kimball Financial Services is not affiliated with Money Concepts Capital Corp. Get your copy, The Saga of Ike and Penny, today.
Are you looking for a way to get your products or services into the ears of thousands of automotive enthusiasts around the globe? I can help. This is Mark Green here at Cars Yeah, and I'd be honored to be an influencer and ambassador for your brand in a unique and personal way. Five days a week, thousands of subscribers and listeners enjoy the Cars Yeah podcast and website. Contact me today and I'll show you how at mark at com or connect with me through the Cars Yeah website at carsyeah.com. Thank you so much for joining us on today's ride here at Cars Yeah. Drive on over to carsyeah.com to find show notes and inspiring automotive fun. Download your free copy of Filler Up, a fun book filled with gorgeous photographs of fuel filler fun, including quotes from more inspiring automotive enthusiasts. Download your copy today, and we'll see you next time on Cars Yeah. Yeah.